All right, let's take a look at this fabulous 2005 question. Also, no calculator. Let me just check and make sure. Relative. Uh, we're going to have to skip part C. We'll see if we can do part D without that. Okay. We might be just be looking at A and B right here. All right, so here we go, guys. Let F be a function that is continuous on the interval. 0 to 4. I'm going to make a note for myself. That's kind of interesting that it's closed and open. I wonder if that's going to matter. Okay. The function is twice differentiable except at x equals 2. I'm sure that's going to be important. Not differentiable at 2. Although, you know, this is just an aside here. It still has a point at 2. It's not differentiable, but it has a point. So could it be like cusp, sharp corner, or something like that. I'm wondering. Okay. Da, 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 da. The function and its derivatives have properties indicated where DNE indicates that the derivatives do not exist at 2. For 0 to 4, find each value which has have relative extremum. Remember, extremum is the word for mins and maxes both, okay? Determine whether it has a max or min at each of these values. Justify your answer. All right, here we go. Uh, go part A. From 0 to 4, so this is our table question. All right. And I'm just breaking it up by every single um, thing because that's how it's like broken up here. And you guys, when I look at this uh, table, I am looking at F prime. Okay, so we're just looking at that bar right there. All right. And it is telling me that it goes positive, positive, negative, negative. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do uh, my graph of increasing, increasing, decreasing, decreasing. So the only relative extrema is right here. Okay. So I would say it has a relative max at x equals 2, except how many different times did it tell us up here that it's not differentiable at x equals 2, right? So the derivative is not there, but remember, we can still have a point there, okay? So be okay with that. Hmm, where'd my camera go? There we go. Okay, so it does have a relative max at x equals 2. It still can have a point there. In fact, it does. It has a relative max at x equals 2, and what we're going to say is because f prime of x uh, changes from positive to negative at x equals 2. Okay, and then you could write there are no relative mins or something. Okay, because it never changes from positive, from negative to positive. Part B, on the graphs is provided, sketch a graph of the function that has all the characteristics. Now, you guys remember I was telling you, they'll give you some points. So here we go. I got 0, negative 1. I've got 1, 0. I've got 2, 2. And I've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 0. And it does go to 4. I don't know what it's doing at 4, but there's my points. Okay, now I'm going to kind of draw myself a pathway, and my pathway is going to be, okay, uh, it goes positive, positive, negative, negative. So even though I don't know where 4 is, I know it's at least below the axis because it had to go negative, right? So positive, positive, negative, negative. But now the important part is I'm going to add in the concavity. Now that means concave down, so I'll go ahead and draw it like this. Okay, that means concave up, so I'll go ahead and draw it like this. That means concave down, so I'll go ahead and draw it like this. And then that means concave up, so I'll draw it like this. And the fact that it told me bracket 0 to negative 4 means there's like an open circle right there. Okay, but do you see that there is a sharp corner here? But it's still a relative max, so just a sharp corner. All right. 
Okay, so I would actually like you guys to look at the scoring guide for this, right? So here's, these are just a couple of points each, but finding the relative max at two, that was a point. The justification, because f prime changes from positive to negative at x equals 2, that was a point. So that's how they would like spread that up, you know. And then on letter B, putting all the points there and counting the behavior at 2, 2. So like the little, the little like, I don't know, shark fin. <laughs> um, that was a point. And appropriate increasing, decreasing in concavity was a point. But does that all look very, very similar to what our graph looks like? Okay, so that's just kind of how these things are graded in terms of like points and stuff like that. Yeah, so we definitely are not going to be able to do uh, C or D on this problem. So that was it, just getting a little table problem, a little chance of uh, graphing. The rest of that will come in, stuff that we're going to learn later. Okay, so we'll go ahead and move on to our next question. Okay, guys, next we're going to look at number four. I didn't notice there's actually eight questions on here because four and five were on the same page. I didn't notice that. But there's no... Um, room below number four so we're gonna go above okay let's go ahead and read this one all right so we have okay so we have a function it says let k uh, let f be the function defined by f of x equals k square root x ln x for all x greater than one so x is a positive number mostly just to deal with um, issues in the domain because we can't take square roots or lns of negative numbers okay K is a positive constant, so K is some number, I don't know what it is. All right, for part A, I'm going to go ahead and find the first and second derivative. All right, so let me write my uh, original problem up here. F of X is K square root X minus ln X. Let's find a first derivative. Now, I think the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to just call this 1 half because i got to take multiple derivatives anyways bring it down in front so it's going to be one half k times x to the if i subtract one negative one half now k is a constant so it's just going to stay there okay and then the derivative of ln of x is one over x so let's write this a tiny bit better it just looks a little confusing so it's uh one half k and then x to the negative one half that goes on the bottom is square root x. All right, that looks nice. That looks like something because I'm probably going to be asked in future parts of the problem to work with that. Okay, now we're going to find the second derivative. All right, one half k right here, you guys. So this whole thing is a constant. So when I bring this down front, one half times negative half is negative one fourth k, sorry, maybe one fourth k, and then it's x to the negative three halves. Okay, now let me remind you how I've done the derivative of that in the past. Uh, I'll just write it off to the side. Basically write that as x to the negative one. So the derivative is positive one x to the negative two. Okay. So it's positive 1x to the negative 2. Now, again, in case I, I don't know if I'm going to have to use this part for something, but I think I'm going to make it look nice too. You do not have to. On a typical free response, you can leave it exactly like that, but I think it's going to ask me to do something with these equations. So I'm going to go ahead and write 1 fourth k and then x to the 3 halves on the bottom and then one and x squared on the bottom. All right, and I'm feeling pretty good about those derivatives. Cool. All right, trying to keep my work nice and neat here. For part B, for what value of the constant k does f have a critical point at x equals one? For this value of k, determine whether it's a maximum or neither, blah, blah, blah. Let's take these one thing at a time. What does critical point mean? So the critical point is a point where the derivative equals zero. And if it's x equals one, I'm basically saying the derivative um, at one equals zero. So you got to kind of take those words and translate them into a calculus statement. All right. OK. So I know that f prime of 1 needs to equal 0. So let's go to my f prime equation here. 
I'm going to plug in 1 for x. Now remember that k is still there. Uh, I'm actually going to use this equation. Let's keep our eye on this one right here. Okay, so it's 1 half k over the square root of 1 minus 1 over 1, and I need that to equal 0. So, okay, square root of 1 is 1, so this is just 1 half k minus 1 equals 0. I'll add the 1 to the other side. 1 half k equals 1, and I'll multiply by so both sides by 2. So on this side, I'll just go by 2 on both sides. So then my answer is k equals 2. Okay? All right, so for what value of k does the constant have a cr critical point x equals 1? I figured that out. For this value, determine whether it's a max, min, or neither. Okay, that's a sine line graph, right? Now, for this value of k, so k is constant, I got to go back to my x equation. Okay, so you guys, again, I'm going to go back to this equation right here. k is 2, so my equation is going to be uh, 1 over 2 times 2 over square root x, which is going to cancel out. Okay, so because I'm running a little bit out of room, I'm just going to do 1 over square root x minus 1 over x. And I'm going to say that this equals 0, and I need to solve that. You might be thinking, like, how on earth do I solve that? Okay, well, here's what I'm thinking. Let's go ahead and move this to the other side. So I have uh, 1 over square root x equals 1 over x. I'll cross multiply. So I get x equals square root x. I'll square both sides. I know this looks a little bit random, you guys, but just stick with me. x squared equals x. I'm not allowed to cross off an x from both sides, but what I can do is now bring this back over. Factor out an x, and x is 0 and 1. This must have been a problem from a really hard year, 2007. Ugh. Rough. So on my sine line graph, I'm putting 0 and 1, not 2. 2 was k that was part of the equation. I'm putting 0 and 1. Oh, gosh darn it. I don't even think I had to find all that now that I did it. I don't know that I needed to because it says, does it have a max, min, or neither at x equals 1? I only care about this. I don't even need to know what other the critical points are, so that was dumb of me. But look at all that lovely algebra I did. That's cool. Okay. That's a good, I mean, it's still a good review of seeing how you could solve things, right? So uh, you're welcome. Okay, so remember that k is the number in here. The actual function of f prime, I keep getting messed up on this a little bit myself. The actual function is, okay, 2 over 2, so it's 1 over the square root of x minus 1 over x. That is my function. So that is what I'm testing, okay? And I just now realized, actually, we are not even allowed to test any points down here. Because remember, we we're just testing 0 to infinity. So, let me get rid of this. Um, okay, let's test something between 0 and 1, like a half. No, I'm not going to test a half. You know why? i got to plug in something that I can actually take the square root of. So I'm not going to test a half. I'm going to test a fourth. Make my life less annoying. Okay, when I plug in a fourth to here, I get 1 over the square root of a fourth minus 1 over a fourth. So that's 1 over a half minus 1 over a fourth. 1 over half is 2. 1 over 4 is uh, 4, and 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So that's going to be negative. Now let's say I'm plugging something uh, bigger than 1, like uh, maybe 2. So Nope, not 2. I'm going to pick 4. <laughs> Why? Because it has square roots in it. All right. 1 over the square root of 4 minus 1 over 4 means it's 1 half minus 1 fourth which is 2 fourths minus 1 fourth, which is 1 fourth. So that's positive. So negative to positive. So I can actually answer the question at x equals 1, f of x has a relative minimum because f prime of x changes 
from negative to positive. Okay, as I was looking at part C, it is uh, really not <laughs> something that we're going to be able to do right now. So we're going to fix, uh, skip part C on number four. I'll post this video, and then we will come back and do a couple more.